you know, we both had super meaningful careers in the world. Education and healthcare, they're super important. But one of the things I realized is that there was still this longing. I always felt like I was a fish out of water. I was afraid to put myself out there and be seen for who I am. I kind of wanted to fit the mold of who I thought I was supposed to be. When he said he was gonna turn down another promotion and leave his job with two teenagers, it was like, are we, are we gonna do this? It came at a cost because I had to give up a six-figure career. And I was making like 10 or 12 bucks an hour because I was driving rideshare. Were we terrified of what we're gonna do? Yep, <laughs> every moment. I'm Asul Taronis. I'm Steve Vinoy. And we are coaches, writers, and podcasters. And we are creators. So I spent 24 years in education and I was a teacher and I was a principal for a good part of those years. I was an industrial engineer. I had reached really a pinnacle in my career and on the outside it looked wonderful, but I didn't feel right inside. Like my soul was, I was crushed. I wasn't able to make it to our kids' volleyball games or to the track meets. There was never one shift for us to have dinner together. I kind of always wanted to escape, but I felt trapped. Like, I've come so far, how could I get out? And I was like, as well, I can't do this. While the kids are still in high school, I want to help pick them up and go and be present along with the other parents. And I was doing these visioning mandalas, and what I kept seeing was world travel. Not just travel for the sake of like, let's go here for two weeks this year. It was living around the world. And I leapt out of my career with a vision that someday we would be able to live around the world and have a location independent lifestyle. Oh, I felt so liberated, like so great, because I know he was miserable. I mean, it feels romantic to put a butterfly in a jar, but it, it's, it's watch a butterfly die is what you're doing. And that's what I felt like it was for him. Like he had the things that people would admire, you know, but he didn't have his heart, his life, the joy. The moment he left, he just started to glow again. So I was thrilled. I really had a dream of being a writer and it was always something I had, even as a young kid, that was my goal, but I never thought I could. I'm dyslexic and writing was really hard. I just didn't think it was possible. But I remember the shift happened actually this particular day. One student, great kid came up to me and said, hey, Mr. Taronis, where's your book? And I had an instance where I could look him in the eye and, and lie or admit the fact that I didn't have one because I knew the question was coming. Well, why don't you have a book? And that's what he said. I said, well, to be honest, I'm a little bit afraid. And that had been the truth all along. What if I wasn't any good? What if I couldn't make a living at it? What if I didn't know what to expect and how I was going to pay for my family? And I think that was the turning point for me. I tell people that it took me 24 years and 30 days to write my book. 24 years to think about it and 30 days to write it because I was just so terrified to put myself out there. We help leaders write books that people love. Writing a book isn't just about putting words on a page. Steve always says we, we work with people, not paper. I didn't expect this, somebody reached out to me from the largest international school in China to ask me would I be willing to come to China. We looked at each other and we said, you know, you, you said travel, this, this is on the board. He's like, I think this is the sign that we were looking for that we could do this. As when I got really excited, we'd gotten engaged, we got married, it had become legal in the U.S. And then as we're doing the paperwork and having more conversations with the employer, realize the government in China wouldn't recognize us as a married couple. Azul and our daughter could go as family members, but I wasn't considered a family member. So we looked at alternatives, and really the only alternative that I had that seemed realistic was that I would go as a tourist and be on a tourist visa. I had to leave the mainland of China every 60 days. It was hard that he had to leave the country just to do that, but we, we persisted. So as I was coaching clients and we decided that we would move to Shanghai, I said, what am I going to tell my clients? He's like, just tell them you'll keep coaching them. 
you'll just do it online. I had felt like maybe my only value was in person, but the truth was they just liked the work that we were doing. When the final round of being asked to take a job in Brazil, they started giving more and more offers. We'll move you to New York for six months. We'll have you go to, to, to Brazil for a couple of years to get that school started. We'll have you actually move to all the major cities if that's interesting, to Milan, to Singapore, to London. And this time it included yeah, a, we'll make sure you're a visa for me as well. A work visa. visa and... You'll have a car, a driver, a house, a maid, whatever you want. You'll have all these things. So when, when it was down to the wire, they're basically offering me the job. I was Steve, I said, look, is this what you want to do? Or is there something else? And I was like, honestly, if we could make the living doing this creative work, coaching writers, that's what I want to be doing. He's like, that's what we need to do. We're going to end up right back where we were if we're not careful, because it's safe. Again, we had created exactly what we walked away from, just in a different country. And I think he recognized the trap even more than me. He's like, this is the same pattern that we fall into. We get doing work, we get really good at it, and people promote us, but this isn't our work. This isn't what we're supposed to be doing. And I was like, well, what if we fail? What if it falls apart? It's like, we can go back. We decided, let's not go any further down this path of least resistance. Like, let's just step over here and see what happens. Even if we had to start again, I wouldn't go back. It's a roller coaster because there's there are no guarantees, but that's part of the excitement of it. These are two middle-aged guys who didn't know what they were going to do from their huge, very successful careers to taking the leap. I'm so grateful that we did because I think we would be exactly where we are, climbing the ladder again and again until we found ourselves at the end of our, you know, retirement age going, gosh, I wish I would have. And, and I don't think I ever want to do that. To anybody who might be thinking about changing their path, like standing up for something that they want to make, do it. Don't wait. Don't wait for another second. Steve and I always say, how many of your ideal days are you waiting to give up for the sake of someday? <laughs>